Let's talk about the difference between fixed and floating rate financial instruments. So with a fixed rate instrument, the interest rate is set at the inception of the contract and it's going to remain constant throughout the life of the financial instrument. With a floating rate instrument, on the other hand, the interest rate is going to change throughout the life of the instrument. Now, it's going to change periodically at certain reset dates. It could reset annually so just once a year it's going to be reset or it could reset quarterly or monthly so the frequency of the resetting it depends on that specific financial instrument so every financial instrument has its own resetting frequency and then it's going to be tied to something it could be tied for example to the one month LIBOR so there's some index with any floating rate interest uh, instrument. There's going to be some index that it's tied to, like one month LIBOR, six month LIBOR, something like that. And then you're going to have a resetting frequency, monthly, uh, quarterly, whatever. Okay. Now, an example of floating rate instrument would be uh, a lot of commercial loans happen to be floating rate. Uh, credit cards happen to be floating rate a lot of the time. Now, floating rate instruments are more difficult to value than a fixed rate instrument. With a fixed rate instrument, you just take the just take the discounted value of the expected cash flow. So you take all you forecast what are the expected cash flows from this fixed rate instrument, you discount them to your present value, you sum that up and that is the value of that fixed rate instrument. Floating rate instrument, you don't know what all the cash flows are going to be at the at the beginning of the contract because the interest rate is going to change. So you don't know what the cash flows are going to be. So how would people go and, and value a floating rate instrument? Well, you're still going to discount the expected cash flows, but you don't know all the cash flows. So you might have to do some kind of forecasting model or use implied forward rates to try and make predictions about what the cash flows would be and then discount them back to their present value.